Hi friends, in this video, we're going to talk about how to manage users, configure the login screen, configure the password policy and two-factor authentication in Keycloak. So if you don't know what Keycloak is, I've already made videos on Keycloak and I will leave the link of those videos in the description. So be sure to check out those videos if you don't know about Keycloak. So it's basically an OAuth server where applications can use Keycloak to log in the users on their behalf. I've already made videos on how to use Keycloak as a gateway application for your Python web applications. But in this video, let's try to focus on how to manage users and their security in Keycloak. So first, let's go to the basics, how to add users in Keycloak. So first go to your required realm. In my case, the realm is my org. So let's go to my org realm in Keycloak. So realm is like a universe in Keycloak or an organization in Keycloak. So you can have multiple realms and the users can be isolated in multiple realms. So for a single office, one realm is sufficient. So my realm is my org. So I'm going to the users tab and here I can manage my users. So let's try to add a user now. So I'm clicking the add user button. I'm providing the username and email address and I'm giving a first name and last name. And you can choose whether email is verified or not. Otherwise the user can verify his email for himself. So let's try to create a user now. And now the user is created. You can see in the users tab the user is created click on the created user till now you did not set the password right so let's go to the credentials tab of the user and set the password of the user so i'm going to click the set password so i'll set a password and if temporary is on the user when he logs in for the first time has to reset his password so for now let's try to keep temporary as off and let's try to say now i've created a password for the user all right let's try to check whether the user can log in or not since I'm logged in as an admin in this browser, let's go to an incognito tab. Now to check if the user can log in or not, you have to go to the account page of the user, right? Since my Keycloak is running at localhost 8080 and the user is created in the realm named my org, I have to go to the Keycloak address, which is localhost 8080 slash realms slash the realm name, which is my org slash account. So now I can access the account of the user. So let's try to go to this URL and let's try to sign in as that user we have just created. So I'm going to click the sign in button and let's try to enter the username and password. You can see there are remember me and forgot password options in this login screen and we can even configure that. First, let's try to sign in as the user. So I'm clicking the sign in button and now the user is signed in. You can even see the user's account information like by clicking on this personal info, you can see the user's username, email address, first name, last name and in the account security, you can even configure two-factor authentication to add extra layer of security for yourself. All right, let's try to sign out and see the login screen. I'm gonna click the sign in button again. And here you can see there are remember me and forgot password buttons. These don't come by default, so you have to configure them. So how did I configure the forgot password and remember me buttons in the login screen? So in the Keycloak admin panel, you have to go to the realm settings. And here in the login tab, you have the login screen customization options. So I've switched on the forgot password and remember me options. That's why those are visible in the login screen. You can even enable user registrations. That means new users can register themselves. But if your setup is like the admin can only control the users, then you have to switch this off. That means only the admin can create new users. And next is the email settings. This setting is basically the username cannot be the same as email. If you switch it on, your username and email can be the same. And you can even log in with email now and you're not allowing duplicate emails. That means each user should have a unique email and the verify email is off. And if you switch this option on, user can edit his username. So these are the login screen customization options. And these options are very useful for the admin to configure the level of security of the users. All right, when I click the forgot password, I will enter my username and I will say submit. But if I click submit in the forgot password page, I will be sent an email to reset my password. But for Keycloak to send the email, an email server should be configured, right? Further, in the realm settings and in the email tab, you can configure your email server, which will be used by the Keycloak to send mails to the users. So in this example, I will configure my Gmail in the Keycloak so that Keycloak will use my Gmail account to send emails. So these are the settings. In the from, you have to write your Gmail address and you can configure a display name of your organization. And this is the important settings where you configure the email server. Since we are using email, the host name is smtp.gmail.com and the port is 587 and you can use this enable start TLS. You have to click authentication as enabled and you'll be seeing the username and password settings. The username will be the Gmail which you are using and the password will be the app password in the Gmail. 
you have to configure an app password separately in Gmail. Otherwise, the application can't use the Gmail. So to configure app passwords in Gmail, you just have to go to the account section. And in the account section, just search for app passwords. Go to app passwords and then you have to generate an app password. So first select an app, it's other and select a device. I'll just say my click cloak and then generate. So once you generate an app password, you will get this text. Just copy it and paste it somewhere. And that's it. You have an app password configured in Gmail and use this same app password to be used in your key cloak. So paste the app password here and click save. And once you enter all the settings, you can check your email settings. A test mail will be sent from key cloak. So in this way, I have configured an email server in key cloak. Now if I click forgot password, I will get a mail from key cloak to reset my password. Now that I have configured my email server, let's try to do the forgot password. Let's try to submit my username. Okay, the attempt was timed out. Let's try to do the forgot password again. And now let's try to give my username. And now let's submit. Now it's telling that an email has been sent. And an email something like this will be sent to the user. So there is a link. And if he clicks the link, he can reset his password. So that's how easily you can customize the user's login screen. All right, you have configured the users. You have configured the login screen. So let's try to create a password policy so that the users can keep strong passwords only. So for that, go to your realm and in the authentication tab, go to policies tab. And here there is a tab called password policy. And here you can set all your password policies. Let's try to remove all the policies and I will explain you each policy one by one. By default, there will be no password policy. So let's try to add a policy for expired password. So it's telling that each password will be expired in 365 days. If your policy is like 45 days, you can set 45 and your password will be expired in 45 days. And let's try to create another policy for not recently used. So it's about the password history where you can't set recent passwords as a new password. And password blacklist. So you can specify a text file where you can give a list of blacklisted passwords. Suppose there's a password called ABCD at the rate 1234 and you don't want users to use that password. You can do that using password blacklist. I will tell about password blacklist at the end. Let's try to create other policies. There is minimum length where you can say how much is the minimum length of your password. There is not email. That means you can't set your email as your password. And there is not username. That means you can't set username as your password. And there's special characters. That means you have to use at least one special character or you can increase the number of special characters you want and you say you have at least one uppercase letters and you can say you can have at least one lowercase letters and you can change the number also and you can even specify that there should be at least one digit or more digits in your password and you can say the maximum length of a password should be 64 digits or whatever and this is the hashing algorithm how the password will be hashed in your database and this is the hashing iterations so i generally don't fiddle with these because these are already in best practices so basically using password policies like this, you can enforce users to use strong passwords. All right, let's talk about the password blacklist thing. Here you have to specify the text file where the password blacklist will be present. So in which folder the text file should be present? In your Keycloak installation folder, there is this data folder. And in that you have to create a folder called password blacklist. And in that folder, you can create a text file. So in my case, the text file is blockpass.txt. So if I just open this text file, I have kept a blacklist of two passwords and I don't want users to set these as their passwords. And remember the line ending should be of Unix style, not the Windows CL or of style. All right, now we have created a blacklist of passwords. Let's try to mention this text file name in our key cloak configuration. So the file name is blockpost.txt, right? In the password blacklist, just write blockpost.txt and save this configuration. And now you have set a password policy for your users. Let's try to test the password policy. So I'm going to the user test user two, and let's go to the credentials tab, and let's try to reset the password to a new password. Let's try to make the new password as password at the rate one to three, which was our blacklisted password. And let's try to save this. It is telling that you require at least one uppercase character. So before blacklist, it is checking other conditions. So let's try to keep an uppercase character. So now I kept the new password as password at the rate one to three, but P is capital. So let's try to save this new password. And now you can see the password is blacklisted. So even though you follow the password policy, if it's blacklisted, it will not be allowed to set. 
all right now let's go to another interesting topic which is configuring two factor authentication in keyclock so in your example when you enter the username and password you're just logging in but it's better to have another layer of security which is two factor authentication you can set two factor authentication in keycloak by going to the authentication tab of your realm in the flows tab click on the browser flow and when you scroll down there is something called browser conditional otp instead of making it conditional just make it required and now if you try to log in you will be seeing a two factor screen so since it's set let's try to log in now so i have entered my credentials click on sign in so after I enter the username and password, I'm not logging in directly. I'm being shown in mobile authenticator setup. So I have to configure two factor before logging in. So you can install any one of these three apps, Microsoft Authenticator, Free OTP or Google Authenticator from your Play Store or App Store. And I'm showing you the screenshots for a Microsoft Authenticator app. So first you install the Authenticator app, click on add account and click on other account type and then scan the QR code which is shown in the browser and then you will be shown an OTP which you have to enter. So let's try to do that now. So now I'm opening my authenticator app and scanning the QR code. And now I got a one time code. So I'm going to enter it now and click submit. And now I have entered through the authenticator app. So next time I sign in, let's try to go to sign out and sign in again. If I click on the sign in button, I'll be shown a OTP screen where I have to use the authenticator app to enter the OTP. So I'm going to enter the OTP from the authenticator app now. And if I click sign in, now I'm signed in successfully by using the OTP from my authenticator app. So using two factor authentication increases the security a lot because even if the password is compromised, the attacker needs to get the OTP. So it's always good to use two factor authentication for user login and two factor authentication can be easily set by using the flows browser and you click on the conditional OTP as required instead of optional by default it's conditional you have to change it to required and this is how simple it is to set up two-factor authentication in Keycloak imagine creating a gateway server on your own with two-factor authentication which is robust and secure all the work is done by Keycloak for you and you can easily use it as a gateway application for your web applications and in the authentication tab in the policies tab there is also OTP policy. These are the default two-factor authentication OTP settings and these are good enough. So that's it guys. In this video, we have completed how to manage users, login screen, password policy, two-factor authentication in Keycloak. And even we have set the email server in Keycloak so that Keycloak can send emails to users. You can see I've created a blog post on how to manage users, login screen, password policy, and two-factor authentication in Keycloak. I have given you the screenshots and notes so that you can configure your own Keycloak to have better password policy and two-factor authentication. So be sure to check out the link of this blog post in the description of this video. So I've also given you the links to the official documentation so that you can do further reading on how to configure Keycloak. Please ask questions or post your valuable feedback in the comment section. Hope you like this video guys. Thank you for watching. Peace.